Hi, and welcome to another episode of Executive Edge at Lehigh University. I'm David Welsh, your host, and I'm very happy to have with us today the CEO of Vistex. Vistex was started in 1999 and now operates in over 14 countries with over 1,200 employees. Uniquely, Vistex creates millions of dollars of value for its clients by optimizing their go-to-market strategies. They work with some of the largest brands in the world that include Apple, Walmart, CVS, the BBC, Viacom, and many others. Again, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you one of our very own, Sanjay Shaw. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, my pleasure. Happy to be here. So tell me a little bit more about Vistex. It sounds like you've really uncovered a unique opportunity in the market by focusing on the details. Correct. I think uh, if I were to describe uh, what Vistex does in as few words as possible, we help companies take their products and services into the marketplace. We help them with their programs and strategies around how they can optimize uh, value out of what they have created uh, internally. We help them take it to the external world and how they package it, how they program it, and how they offer uh, the business value around their programs and services. That's in a nutshell how I can describe what we do. So on a personal level, Tell me how you got started. What made you want to do this? Where was the opportunity? You know, I'm, by, by many accounts, I'm what you would call an accidental entrepreneur. Okay. I uh, worked with some of the largest companies in the world after I graduated from Lehigh. I went to work for Pricewaterhouse, General Motors, and SAP. And uh, I had this idea about uh, doing this at SAP, which was uh, also a large software company at that time. And then SAP felt that this is not something they wanted to invest in. So. Uh, you know, I felt strongly about what uh, I wanted to do, and uh, so I decided to break off from them and, uh, and start Vistex. See, what's Vis Vistex core competency? What do you really focus on? Yeah, I think what, what we focus on is providing the technology that's required to uh, create and then administer and optimize these programs. So we provide the systems that are required to provide the, the myriad of data points that are required by these typically large organizations that we work with to figure out how should they price their products and services, uh, what types of uh, incentives and uh, rebate structures that should be offered. If you look at healthcare companies, for right, example, right. you know we work with some of the larger healthcare companies as well, like Bayer. How do they decide what how the drug should be priced in the different market segments, uh, not just here in the US, but across the world. So just optimizing all of those data points, making sure that data gets to the right decision maker and that they can act on that. It sounds, Correct. I mean, that's, Correct. that's Correct. Vistex, and, right? Exactly. I think what makes Vistex better than most organizations is actually right in the name itself. If Vistex is really the fusion of vision and execution. And so, um, you know, I've always believed that uh, vision without execution is just daydreaming, and execution without a vision is just hard work. And you really need a fusion of vision and execution to be able to achieve success. And so, at least that's what my mindset was when I formed the organization a little over 18 years ago. I, I believe that makes us unique, is not only do we sell on the vision of how our customers can optimize their programs, but we also help Execute it down to the very last detail. Wow. And I think that's what makes us unique. Tell me a little bit about what you see business looking like in the next three to five years. How is it changing from a macro perspective? Do you mm -hmm. see any trends or things that yeah. maybe as a as a as a company you'd be looking at? The part that I'm intimately involved with and what I see changing is uh, you know how these companies message up, package and take their products so the higher and higher order yeah. transformation of sort of business processes. I mean, right. from industrial age, doing things with your hands to using robots to now using software and technology, maybe artificial intelligence. Correct, things, correct. Things like so we that. see a lot of the advent of, you know, you probably, uh, you know, instead of typing in what a product does and what the pricing structure is, you may be talking to a chatbot and saying, hey, tell me more about product X. Right, right. I mean, that's amazing because you really, I mean, it, you're in the middle of it. I mean, we're, we're, we're all of those data points come together and people just look and say, wow, that's frustrating. You've kind of said, no, there's a way to make money out of this mm -hmm. and really sort of peel back the onion or the data onion yeah. and, and say, no, there's a way to put all these pieces together and optimize that. Wow, I mean, that's because data is not going away. Exactly. And the, and the complexity, like you said, is not going, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. If you were to look back to your sort of 21-year-old self, what would you say to them to become successful. 
And knowing today that success is business success, financial success, could be spirit, I mean, it could be across the, across the board, but mm -hmm. we're talking about business today, but what would be that edge? Once you, once you find and, and, and decide to pursue your, your passion, there are a couple of things that I think you should do, I believe, that uh, would give you the, the edge. And this, you know, developing an edge is not a one-time activity, right? I think that's, that's one of the key things I like to do, is that just don't think that you chanced upon something and it probably worked for you for a month or even a year that you now have an edge, okay. right? That's it. It's like what you have to do is to figure out a way to continuously be able to maintain and polish that edge, okay. right? Is that continue to question yourself, you know, don't get out of your comfort zone. Don't believe that one success is gonna parlay into multiple successes. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's amazing because what you just said was basically what your company is, right? Yep. Think about your vision, mm -hmm. think into the future, yep. but then how are you going to execute that on a personal level? I, I believe that if you want to keep the edge that you were talking about, you should learn more every day than you did yesterday. And you should make that a habit. Right. Learning is a habit and it's not a one-time activity and that is something you should do on an ongoing continual basis and then learning can come in many ways right. shape or forms right it doesn't come just from a graduate degree you know you go back for executive education for example right. or you participate in uh, you know uh, education tours that your that your company offers and maybe a combination of the two maybe some distance learning etc but make make it a point and a habit to learn more than you learned yesterday what scares you i hope I never lose that passion to learn, that uh, I uh, don't wake up one day and say, geez, uh, you know, I think I've, I've achieved, accomplished enough now. I think I'm going to rest. <laughs> That's what scares me. Really? Yeah. So it's just this ongoing drive to continue yeah. to learn and grow. Yes. I, 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 I need a, a constant feeding of intellectual nourishment. I hope that if that stops, that, that would scare me. I think sometimes uh, executives get in the mindset of, yeah, I think I know what I need to know to do what I need to do. And I think to them I would say, you know, you know less than you think you do. So figure out a way to know what you don't know, that you really think you know. Right. And that can come in many forms, you know, talk to your employees, go get some education, go step out of your comfort zone, step out of your typical boundaries, uh, interact with others in an academic setting, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a business setting where your mindset is, hey, I really do need to know more than I think I do. What is Mr. Shah's executive edge? Sanjay Shah is such a firm believer that vision without execution gets you nowhere, that he's integrated that concept into the name of his company. Focusing on the details creates opportunity and higher your weaknesses. Lifelong learning is essential. To delve deeper into any of these topics, please check out our recommended reading list. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future episodes of Lehigh's Executive Edge.